We looked at creatinine clearance, we looked at pharmacology and PKPD of aminoglycosides. We also looked at traditional and extended interval empiric dosing of aminoglycosides. Now, the last learning objective is given a patient with a gram-negative infection, select an individualized aminoglycoside dose and frequency based on serum aminoglycoside levels. Aminoglycoside follow first order kinetics, also referred to as linear kinetics. And the reason this is called linear kinetics is because if you plot the natural log of uh, concentration of aminoglycoside in plasma on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, then you can actually get the linear relationship between two levels. This is assuming that these levels are after the end of infusion and after the distribution phase. And this loop of this linear line is actually negative k, and k is the elimination constant. So we can use the famous equation c equals c naught times e to the negative kt. In other words, c2 or the final concentration equals c1 or the initial concentration times e to the negative kt. And the t is between is the time it takes to go from C1 to C2. So we can adjust the dose of aminoglycoside based on measures peak and trough. So we can calculate the k based on the two levels that we get, because k is the slope of this line. So the k equals to ln of C1 over C2 divided by delta t. So imagine this first level is a C1, or sometimes it could be the peak, but it doesn't have to. So the C1, which is taken at time 1, and then the second level during the same dosing interval would be C2, or the second concentration, which would be at T2. So the time it takes to go be from T1 to T2, or from C1 to C2, the time it takes is the delta T. So, and that's the time that you will use in this equation. And delta T is the T that goes in this equation at the top. So these are the same equation that is just rearranged to give you the K. And what makes this different is that this is actually the K in your patient. The K that we calculated previously was from population kinetics. So we were just estimating what the K would be in your patient. In this case, because we're actually getting levels in your patient, we're calculating the K specifically in that patient. So this is referred to as individualized kinetics as opposed to population kinetics. Of course, if C1 and C2 don't are not uh, true peak and trough, you can actually extrapolate. So you can say the equation is peak equals trough times e to the kt, or an, uh, another way of saying it is trough equals peak times e to the negative kt. Again, these are all the same equation, it's just a matter of rearranging them to get what you're looking for. And of course, what you do with the k is to get the individualized vo volume of distribution. So the volume of distribution that we calculated previously was an estimate. But this time, since we have a specific k from the patient, we can actually calculate the actual volume of distribution in the patient. And what we do with the uh, next is to calculate tau again. So now instead of the estimated k, we use the actual k that we calculated in the patient. So get the new, new tau. And then using the new tau and using the individualized k and the individualized volume of distribution, now we come up with a dose that's very accurate in the patient. Once we get the dose and tau, then we can actually verify to see if it's going to give us, if the new dose and frequency is going to give us the peak and trough that we want. So we can actually use this to estimate what peak we can expect from this dose and frequency. So you plug it in and it will tell you what the peak is and then you use this peak here to see what trough it would give you. And that's how you verify to see if the dose and frequency that you're about to recommend is actually going to give you to the goal peak and trough. We will do exercises in class to do some calculations. This concludes this presentation.